All right, so now that we got all that stuff out of the way, uh, the basis for linear motion, we, I now want to get to what uh, speed and velocity, where we're now finally going to be using equations from the reference table and starting to do questions that you would normally see on the regions. Yes, you will see things about identifying vectors or being able to add vectors that are in one dimension, two dimensions, graphically and mathematically, uh, being able to calculate the distance and displacement the way we did before. But this is the first time where we're actually going to be using a real equation. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that I go into very good detail over how you're going to do this. All right. So uh, we talked about how uh, we had two different measurements for how far something can travel. Uh, that's what distance and displacement are, though there is a slight difference between them. They essentially are talking about how far you travel. Uh, we can take it one step further and talk about how fast the object ends up moving, how fast it takes for it to get there. And that's what speed and velocity are. Now just like how we have distance and uh, displacement representing pretty much the same thing, but two different types of measurements, same thing occurs with speed and velocity. Speed is defined as the rate of distance covered. Uh, because of this, do you think it would be a scalar term or a vector term? Well, because speed is the rate of distance covered, that means that this is going to be a scalar. Because distance is a scalar, so speed is a scalar. Uh, velocity, on the other hand, its definition is the rate of change in the displacement over time. Or, another way to say it, it's a speed with the direction. So based off of this definition, do you think velocity is a scalar or a vector? Well, seeing as speed is our scalar, velocity has to be the vector. But not only that, we're using displacement, which is also a vector term, and they also say the phrase a direction, which again is related to vectors. So speed is our scalar, and velocity is our vector. Remember, another way that we can remember this is that speed is a simple term and scalars are simple terms. All right, uh, just like with distance displacement, these have the same units. Speed and velocity are both going to be measured in meters per second. All right, um, now there's a few terminology parts that I want to go over. Um, there's uh, something called instantaneous speed. Uh, that's pretty much the speed that you travel at at some specific moment. Uh, usually when we talk about instantaneous speed, this is referring to things like uh, initial velocity, final velocity, or things like that. Uh, now your speedometer in the car is usually measuring uh, your instantaneous speed. Uh, so you can think of instantaneous speed as real-time speed. Uh, and like I said, this is initial or final. This is slightly different from something like average speed, which is the average, as the name implies, the average of all the instantaneous speeds. Now there's a few ways that we can find average speed. The first is by doing uh, total distance over total time. So this leads us to our very first equation. Now before I continue, I just want you to note, most of you already have reference tables. If you don't, I'll be posting a, a, a digital reference table on Canvas in a, in a bit. This is your first equation on the back page. Um, it is used, we're going to go over it now and we're going to use it a few times, but it is not a super useful equation. What I would say is that if you're Unless you're finding average speed, and specifically average speed, you should avoid this equation. We're going to go over a few equations, uh, I believe, next video, where I'll go over uh, some other equations dealing with speed. Those are the equations you want to use first. I pretty much recommend that you use this equation as a last resort and only when they say the phrase average speed because the other equations are significantly better. All right, this is another equation that we have, which is, um, it's not on the reference table, so you technically have to remember this, but if you 
go by go back to what this rep, uh, symbol represents. This is representing average speed. Average is taking adding up all the numbers and dividing by the number you have. So we have two speeds, an initial speed and a final speed. Add them up, divide by two. It's the exact same way you would find the average between two tests. If you got a 50 and a 60, add the two numbers, divide by two, and that's your average test grade. Um, that's what VF and VI are representing. So this is your initial velocity, this is your final velocity, and V with a bar above it is representing your average velocity. All right, so make sure you note that. Uh, so uh, you should have a section in your notes, uh, in the guided notes, where you can write these equations and on the side, you write down what each of the symbols represents. Now, one thing I would say is that you don't need to write down uh, exactly what they represent. Maybe for the first few uh, equations, you can do that. But for the most part, those equations or what, they're, uh, what they represent are on the reference table. It's on the right side of the back page. What you could do instead is write down what each one uh, is measured in. Because again, units is going to be a huge thing. So uh, D here is measured in meters. The T for time is uh, measured in seconds. And the average velocity, the final velocity, and the initial velocity are all going to be measured in meters per second. Now there's one last thing that I want to mention. So if you look on the reference table, this has two definitions. It could be average speed or average velocity. And this also has two definitions. It could be distance or displacement. Uh, the reason I point that out is this. If you're doing average V as a speed, so you're using this as average speed, think back to our definition, what would we put on top? We would use distance. If instead we're using average V as being a velocity, average velocity, then the D here would represent displacement. So if we're finding a scalar, we need to use a scalar. If we're finding a vector, we need to use a vector. All right. So just uh, keep that in mind that um, if you're finding speed, you need distance. If you're finding velocity, you need displacement. All right. So pause this video, work on this stuff, and we'll go over it in a second. Okay. So in order to get the full points, I didn't really mention this too much, but one of the huge things in this class is uh, free response questions require you to show work. Very similar to some of your the math problems you did. Uh, now, in order to get to show work, to get the points for that, you have to show three specific things. You need to show an equation, you need to show substitution with units, and you need to show answer with units. And I'll show what exactly that means right now. Now, my big tip is, especially as we start off, I recommend on the left-hand side writing down what every number you're given all the p known pieces of information. That's what I call them. They're the known pieces of information. So when I read this question, uh, it says 4,000 meters. Now, because this is a meters, I know this has to be a distance. Also, using context clues, I can figure out that this number is a distance. So I'm going to write D equals 4,000 meters. The next one, seconds, Clearly, this is time. So I'm going to write t equals 50 seconds. And then I'm looking at the question where it says, what is the magnitude of the car's velocity? So I'm looking for average v. Now, even though they don't say average v, I know it's going to be that. Uh, so these are my known pieces of information, d, v, uh, sorry, d, t, and, delta, and uh, average v. Now, for now, this may not seem very useful because we only have one equation, well, technically two equations. But as you can see on the reference table, there are about 50 equations that you're going to have to juggle between.
it's super helpful if you write down everything you know and you're given and use that to figure out what equation works best so from here I know I'm going to use that that one on the reference table average V equals D over T so this is the equation part I, there's no numbers in it it's blank it's all by itself it's exactly from the reference table this is my first thing that I have to write the next thing is me plugging in these numbers with their units so the 4,000 meters or the 50 seconds so this is my second thing that I need to show and then the last one is the final answer with the units so I plug in 4,000 meters divided by 50 and I get 80 meters per second if you do all three of these things you get the full points on it the free response questions you need to make sure you do this I know uh, there are some other regences where teachers may have said that but then they went back and said and we don't really care about units uh, it doesn't matter yeah that's not the case here you need to make sure you put units it could be the difference between passing and mastery between failing and mastery so you can lose a lot of points on this so you want to make sure that you're showing your work all right here's the next question pause the video work on itself and again try to do what we did all right so once again I want to start off with writing down our known pieces of information so uh, right here this is my first number and thankfully they actually say the distance is this so I'm gonna write down D equals 300 kilometers now what I'm gonna also note really quickly uh, usually it's helpful to kinda of like peruse the question real quick I note that this is in meters per second but this number is in kilometers these units don't match so I need to fix that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this and get rid of the kilometers the kilo uh, look on the reference table and you see that the kilo of kilometers represents 10 to the third so 300 kilometers is basically 300 times 10 to the third meters so that's where this comes from uh, the next question or the next thing I know the time 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds and once again they want average speed so use uh, my equation V bar equals D over T plug the numbers I have on this side into the equation and I get an answer 83.3 meters per second again these are the three steps equation substitution with units answer with units these things I'm gonna constantly reiterate over and over and over again all right here's the next question pause video work on itself go over in a second all right so for the first part uh, part a where it says answer in terms of centimeters per minute well thankfully they gave us the numbers in terms of centimeters and minutes so I'm not gonna change them uh, once again I have a distance that's meters uh, sorry centimeters and then we have a time in minutes so we have D and T and I'm looking for once again the average velocity V bar equals D over T I plug in my numbers with the units and I get my answer with the units now I'm not checking your work at this moment but it's highly recommended that you show all this work right now uh, like in most practices uh, if you're not pretending like this is a test then when it comes time to actually doing this on the test you're gonna forget okay uh, now for part this should say part B uh, for part B now that we're doing meters per second we have to convert this so the 8 centimeters becomes 0 0.08 meters remember on the reference table centimeters is 10 to the negative 2 so 0 0.08 meters and then 0.5 minutes that's gonna be 30 seconds and then I just redo the math again now if you really wanted to you could have taken your answer up here and converted it uh, by you know using some sort of proportion setup I, I would uh, advise against it 
just convert these numbers, they're easier, and just redo the calculation. All right, here is the next question, and I'm gonna warn you, this one is tricky. So pause the video, work on this stuff, and we'll go over it in a second. All right, now it's asking, what is the magnitude of the runner's average velocity? Now, if you recall, we had an equation that said that I and I said this before that you can find average velocity by adding up all the instantaneous velocities and then dividing it by whatever. Uh, some people probably would have done that, taken 20 divided by 5, 13 divided by 6, 18, whatever, whatever. Uh, the problem is that doesn't work here because the times are all different, meaning you're traveling at certain speeds longer than others. Uh, long story short, what you want to do instead is just go back to the basics. Find the total distance and find the total time. Add all these distances, add all the times, and plug it into the equation that way. D over T. So 92 meters divided by 27 seconds, and we get 3.41 meters per second. This is really the only way to do it. The other way to do it is way more complex than it, you really want to do it. So I, that's my recommendation. Do it this way. For the most part, if you're going to find an average velocity, it would have to only have two velocities and it would want to specifically say that one's an initial velocity and one's a final velocity or that one's a starting and one's an ending. So um, yeah, if you have more than two, you're probably not gonna be doing uh, adding up and dividing by the number. So pretty much, again, this is your default. See if you can use this equation first. If this one doesn't work, then you can go to the uh, other one, the one that says V uh, bar equals VF plus VI over two. All right. So here's the next one. Pause the video, work on itself, and I'll go over it in a second. So once again, I'm going to write down what's given to me. So they tell me that the joggers initially running at five meters per second. Meters per second is a speed or a velocity. So I know VI is five meters per second. He speeds up to this, another speed. Again, I'm paying attention to the units. So that's going to be my final velocity. And they want to know what the average velocity is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use the equation that has average velocity, VI and VF. VF plus VI divided by two. Plug the numbers in and I get my answer. Now here's a quick question. Would I get full points for this question? So ask yourself that. Would I get full points? The answer is I would. I actually would. Now you might be thinking, I don't have units next to these numbers and I've been stressing that this whole time. Well, that goes back to why I've been doing this this whole time. There actually is a second ancillary benefit to writing down your given information on the side. Uh, the main thing is that I don't, uh, if you have it written like this where you say VI equals blah 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 meters per second, then what I can say is now that I know that you wrote five here, I know what the unit is. You know what the unit is, and it's kosher. So if you write down your given information on the side with their units, again, just like this, you don't have to substitute it in here directly. So it's a nice workaround, and uh, for, in a lot of cases, it might make the li your life easier when it comes to math because some people have problems doing math when there's um, units next to each of the numbers and it becomes uh, a little bit fuzzy and not not super clear all right once again this is supposed to be part B so uh, going over here they want to know what distance we travel so uh, once again we're taking the average velocity that I had before and the time that I have four seconds and I'm going to use the only equation that has uh, that and distance, which is v bar equals 0 over t. This time I'm solving for distance. 
and I get that the distance is 28 meters. All right. So here's uh, the next question. Pause the video work on itself, and we'll go over it in a second. All right. So uh, paying attention to the units, they want it in kilometers per hour. Well, that makes our lives easy, kilometers and hours. So all my units are going to work out. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I write down everything that's given. Uh, well, in this case, I guess I won't. Uh, I'm going to use the equation V bar equals D over T because I have a bunch of distances and a bunch of times. Uh, so the distance, well, I travel uh, 50 kilometers and I travel another 10 kilometers. So my distance is going to be 60 kilometers. Now here's the next question. What is the time? Uh, well, some people might have said it was seven, but they actually tell us in total the hour, uh, the trip is four hours long. It's just split up into a three-hour part and a one-hour part. But the time is going to be four hours. So 60 kilometers divided by four hours, and we get 15 kilometers per hour. Uh, going on to the next part where I'm finding meters per second, once again, I'm going to convert these numbers first and then recalculate. So the distance here is going to be 60 kilometers, or 60 times 10 to the 3, because that's what kilo means. And the time is going to be 4 hours times, I write it as 60 times 60. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So uh, it ends up becoming these numbers. And then once again, use the same equation, plug the numbers in, and I get 4.17 meters per second. Uh, I, I'm aware that the this video is a little bit longer uh, than the other ones. I'm gonna I'm trying to finish up quickly. Uh, there's not really much left that I have to say. So here's the next one. Um, pause video work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. So if you remember, velocity takes into account both speed and direction. So how can we change our velocity? We could do one of three things. We can step on the gas to increase our velocity. We could step on the brake to decrease the velocity. Or we can turn the wheel. Don't forget, velocity is a vector. So direction matters. Uh, I know in the past few questions we've been ignoring direction, but that's only because each of the questions kept asking the magnitude of the velocity. Remember, once that you see that word magnitude, it means direction no longer matters. Or at least in the final answer, direction no longer matters. Now I want you to think about this right now. Uh, how exactly do we find the velocity of an object, and what is my velocity right now? Now, just to give reference, since you can't see me, I'm sitting at my desk, stationary. So what is my velocity right now? Now, if you said that my velocity is zero, you would be wrong. Um, or at least it depends on how we look at it. Because if you're comparing my position to the ground or the chair that I'm sitting on, then yes, I'm not moving. But if we compare ourselves maybe to uh, the outside world, maybe when you're standing on the moon and you're watching me from space, well then I'm moving alongside with the Earth. So my velocity would actually be the same as the velocity of Earth as it rotates, which happens to be 465 meters per second. So is that how fast I'm going? Well, no, because that's just the Earth rotating. Don't forget, the Earth is also going around the Sun. So, if we take that into account, then my speed becomes closer to 30,000 meters per second. So is that it? Is that my final speed? Well, again, no. Depend if we go one step further, well, the Sun is orbiting the Milky Way. So it and our entire solar system is going to be going 220 meters per second. Now that has to be it, right? Again, no, because our uh, galaxy is 
also moving at a staggering speed of 650 meters per 650,000 meters per second. To put this into reference, uh, to go from meters per second to miles per hour, just double these numbers. So this ends up being about uh, 1.3 million miles per hour. So you know you're kicking it when you're looking at that point. Um, so I just wanted to point that out that uh, there is this thing called relative velocity. Depends on where we're looking. Uh, another good example, if you've ever run on a treadmill, um, your you can think of yourself as being stationary compared to the Earth, but you're still moving compared to the treadmill. So it's a, again a, one of those things of it depends on how you're looking at it, and sometimes velocity can get a little weird because of that. Uh, thankfully for you, we don't touch that. But if you do end up going into AP Physics, some of you may end up going to AP Physics, that will be something that you'll look into is what happens when you're looking at uh, an object moving from a different perspective. All right. Uh, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Again, this was really heavy on the calculation stuff, and I'm, I apologize for uh, the video running late. Hopefully the next one uh, is a little bit shorter. But if you have any questions, let me know. Send me a message on mine. Otherwise, good luck, and I'll see you later.